talking about the differences between the Glock 17 and the Glock 34. Now I'm going to be coming at this from two angles. There's going to be kind of the general interest home defense kind of guy and then the competition kind of guy. So we'll start with the home defense guys and get you out of here quick. So the 34 is a long slide variant of the 17. You might be thinking to yourself, boy, those frames sure do look similar. And you'd be right because they're very similar. So similar that they're actually interchangeable if these were the same generations. The difference is really going to be this extra slide you see here with the barrel and the slide. So that's going to do two, well, really three things to the shooting experience. The barrel is going to make the ammunition faster. Now that's really good for the competition guys. Doesn't really matter for home defense guys quite as much. The reason being is bullet technology basically has a speed floor that it needs for bullets to expand if you're using hollow points, which I imagine you probably are. The cool thing about that is all that ammo is developed around a four inch barrel. This is half an inch longer than that. So pretty much all the stated velocities you're gonna get out of a Glock 17. 34 is gonna push those 50 foot per second or so faster than the 17. Uh, that's on the high end, on the low end, maybe 30 feet per second on the low end. The slide obviously is more massive by virtue of being longer. What that's going to do, it's going to slow down the recoil impulse. The slide is not gonna move as athletically as it is gonna on the 17. If you're shooting iron sights, that's not a bad thing because it makes the front sight easier to track in recoil if you understand how to shoot the notch, which means to break the next shot as the sight comes back down into the notch then that's a little bit easier on the 34. It also is going to provide increased sight radius. I've got a whole video talking about sight radius on these guns. Uh, you might check that out for a deeper dive, but suffice it to say that it's going to net better hits if your sights are slightly off target. And then if you actually put the red dot sights on it, everything but velocity goes away. The other couple changes that are going to be different is you can see the slide release lever uh, or slide lock depending on what you like to say is a bit different you got a flush model here and you have the extended model here this is not a big difference i could make do just fine with the flush mount on the 17 but that's what they came with and i'm not going to spend money to change that out and the other difference is the connector in the frame so you got a four and a half pound connector on the 34 five and a half pound on the 17 and it's going to break about a half pound to a pound heavier than that so this is breaking at about five point or five pounds of one ounce this is breaking you know high fives on the trigger pull gauge so the triggers aren't great if you're going to buy aftermarket connectors anyway which most glock owners seem to want to do then that is basically a non-issue so if you're a self-defense guy and you think, boy, I sure would like to carry this gun outside the house sometimes, maybe in the woods, uh, in a holster or anything like that, don't get this one. Uh, the extra barrel length makes an already pretty big gun even more difficult to conceal. Uh, outside the waistband, you're going to have to basically wear a trench coat or something, at least uh, a proper overcoat length to conceal this pistol. If you're going inside the waistband, if you carry appendix, yes, you can carry a 34. I think a 17 is a bit com more comfortable. I think the holster body gets a little bit long on the 34s, but some people say it's more comfortable. So if you're gonna go out of the house, the 17 is gonna be the guy for you. If you're just gonna mount a flashlight on it, even if you are gonna mount the red dot, maybe maybe go for the extra velocity the 34 offers. So, But even still, it's not that much velocity as we've discussed, and you might save the money and go to the range a few more times on the 17. There's not a huge difference between these guns. There's not going to be things you can do with the 34 that you can't do with the 17. The 34 is not more inherently accurate than the 17. So just dispel that notion in your mind. They're both going to be very mechanically accurate, more accurate than you are. On to the competition side of the house. If you're shooting an iron sided division like IDPA, ESP or SSP or USPSA production, or for some reason you're shooting it in limited, which you should have a 44, but if you're shooting in any of those iron sided divisions, then the 34 is going to be a little bit more squared away due to the sight radius that they offer. 
that's not to say that the 17 is going to be a big disadvantage. What you don't realize is the sight radius on the 17 is roughly the same as a 5 inch 1911. So this is still a very good sight radius on this gun. You're not going to be outgunned. I mean, if you think about the most popular guns in production division, they're typically four and a half inch guns between the stock two and the old SPO ones and SPO one shadows. Uh, the shadow two is closer to a five inch gun. Even still, because uh, the, those guns are all hammer fired, the sight radius is going to be a little bit shorter than it is on the 17. So you're really not going to be outgunned from a sight radius perspective shooting a 17 in an iron sight division. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too bent around the rim if you're shooting irons. If you're shooting dots, all you're getting is the velocity. If your ammo is so underpowered that you're barely making power factor, um, make better life choices and load your ammo a bit hotter. That's just, you're playing with fire and there's no benefit to doing that. But the longer barrel is a nice insurance policy that even if your ammo is wonky or the chrono is wonky, you're less likely to get uh, going sub minor with a 34 than you are a 17. So basically you can look at it as a hundred dollar insurance policy, especially if you're mounting dots because the sight radius, as we've mentioned, completely goes away and is a non-factor because you've got a single focal plane that you're focusing on. So if I were to go back in time and order another Glock based on the current offerings, I'd probably get a 17 MOS. Uh, I got the 34s because I spoke with the lady at Glock redeeming the GSSF certificate. If you're not familiar with GSSF, it's basically a raffle masquerading as a pistol match and you can win free Glocks at it, but you have to shoot a Glock to play. So so all you guys who like to scoff at Glocks, GSSF actually gives away free pistols. And if you have a multi-year membership, they'll send you a coupon to purchase it at blue label pricing. So if you're not a first responder, makes Glocks a heck of a bargain. But all of that being said, I'm not gonna stop shooting 34s because I like 17 length guns better. Um, both of these guns are fine and they're roughly the same. So if you've got one, I wouldn't necessarily spend money to change it out for the other one. If you're not sure which one you're gonna go for, I would get the 17 MOS. Cause as I mentioned, the iron sights, while it is better on the 34, it's not a huge advantage, although it is still an advantage. If you have to have every advantage available to you, then by all means, get the 34. But uh, that's what I've got for you guys. I appreciate you guys watching. If you've made it this far, please do subscribe and hit the like button, that does help me. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks guys.